Our next guest points out the Obama administration received intelligence that North Korea was capable of miniaturizing nuclear weapons four years ago. But then President Obama downplayed and tried to discredit the assessment. Joining us tonight, former CIA analyst, now a senior vice president for policy and programs at the Center for Security Policy, Fred Flights. Fred, good to have you here. Good to be here. And, and good on you. Great work. Four years ago, this, pre this president could not have imagined he would be president relying on a, a legacy of a man who appeased, who absolutely threw away every opportunity to contain North Korea that was his duty uh, to fulfill. I, I mean, it's stunning. I think that's right. There's a lot of deception and dishonesty going on here, Lou. You know, on Monday, the Washington Post ran this bombshell story that the Defense Intelligence Agencies determined that North Korea can now arm missiles with miniaturized nuclear weapons. Right. But it didn't mention that in 2013, Congressman Doug Lamborn said the DIA had, to, but had we did, determined this. We did, Fred. We pointed that out. Well, the, the Washington media. Post, I understand, raises your hackles, and, and by the way, mine as well, and many who take the, the time to occasionally glance at it. But the Washington Post is just a source of disinformation that is a Jeff Bezos blog and nothing much more, just as the New York Times has become the Carlos Slim blog. But, uh, you know, th th this was so irresponsible because this was well known in 2013. Well, it wasn't irresponsible. I think you have to say they were very responsible. They are an organization, a political or activist organization with a specific agenda that they are carrying out. No one should mistake these two blogs for being anything other than uh, uh, machines of disinformation. I think that's right. Well, let me tell you what happened here. After this came out in 2013, the Obama administration tried to discredit this DIA report. Right. They said, well, this is an outlier. Other intelligence agencies don't agree with it. Obama himself said he didn't believe it. And why was that? Because the Obama administration had a policy of strategic patience, which really was a policy to do nothing and kick this crisis down the road to the next president. Now we have a president who wants to get this information out there not just to inform the American people, but to put as much pressure on China as he can before military action might be necessary. Now, now let me tell you, Fred, I, I have to tell you, I'm also uh, a, a great skeptic of almost everything I read, see uh, in, in media. Uh, the fact is, I suddenly in six weeks have learned that we have uh, better intelligence about North Korea, in which we now know that North Korea has ICBMs of varying capabilities, but uh, one of which will carry their ICBMs and whatever warhead to our shores, in fact, as deep as our Midwest. I then find out there's a possibility that the North Koreans have a developed hydrogen bomb within six to 18 months, which seems to me to be, even by intelligence standards, an extraordinary margin of error, uh, some triple uh, the amount of time uh, in margin. And then we learn uh, that they have these miniaturized warheads uh, ready to come at us. I mean, Fred, this has been quite a campaign, and I'm not sure who's campaigning right now. I'm not, I, I don't go along with all of those estimates, but frankly, North Korea's program right. has progressed so fast, I think we have to look at the worst case scenarios. But let's look at something else. This is not a defensive program. This is, a, this is an offensive program oh, hell, that's I going to be used worst, one Fred. day. You don't have to convince me there's a problem here. <laughs> don't, don't misunderstand me. But what I do have trouble with, we've got 17 intelligence agencies. We have a president who is fighting leaks from most of those agencies, it seems, and those agencies have been distracted by this president trying to preserve the republic and instead of doing their job, which, find, which is finding out what the hell is going on in North Korea and China and Russia. And it's really getting very disturbing of what we are witnessing happening here. And one wonders in each instance, is it the deep state? Is it, is it North Korea? Is it China? Is, are it agents of uh, Russia? What the hell is going on here, Fred? 
I think there's a big distraction, and I think there are a large number of intelligence officers who support a, a position on these questions that's very inconsistent with what, what the president wants. We should have a Team A, Team B exercise where we bring in outsiders to look at the intelligence on questions like Iran and North Korea. This is what President Ford did concerning the Soviet threat mm -hmm. in the 1970s. We desperately have to have an outside group of people to look at these intelligence assessments and try to determine which of them have been politicized. You know, at the bedrock of this all is a highly questionable intelligence community, uh, and it's very unclear what their purpose uh, their mission uh, and capabilities truly are, and where, where their interests lie. And that is Team A, Team B, take it as deep as you want. That needs to be assessed straight away, don't you think? We have a, but yes, but you know what? We have a great CIA director in Mike Pompeo. I couldn't agree with you more. And, and, and I, I agree with you more, but that leaves, us, that leaves us, well, a lot of room, which we need to find out what the hell's going on. Fred, thanks so much. Fred Flight.